What if I were to tell you what you know of medical imaging is a thing of the past? What if I were to say that surgeons that practice with virtual reality have better outcomes? What if I were to tell you that kids with chronic pain disorders are learning to walk again to virtual reality therapy? This is our new reality at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, where I'm the director of Digital Experience Technologies. Digital Experience Technologies is a team of artists and engineers and developers, doctors and nurses that have come together to see what might happen when we combine the digital world with the world of pediatric medicine. Through animations, virtual reality, and gaming, we are making our hospital a safer place for kids. To start off, why don't we take a peek at the magic of animations and how it's making our hospital a bit of a happier place. Deep inside the T-Building exists a special office where magical things happen. Ah. Imagination and technology come together to create visuals that delight and educate. Welcome to the Cincinnati Children's Media Lab. We all know that medical conditions and procedures can be very difficult to understand, but the magic of animation can help educate patients and families. Here in the Media Lab, we work directly with doctors to create two distinct types of educational videos. Medical procedure animations and character animations that explain medical conditions. The process of creating animation starts with the doctor's idea. They explain to us what they'd like to communicate through the animation, such as a specific surgical procedure. First, we use anatomy books and references to model the anatomy in 3D software. Then, we texture it to make the models look realistic. This is like adding a layer of paint. Next, we think about how the model will need to move and we add bones to control it. This is called rigging. Once this is set up, we can animate the procedure. We go back and forth with the doctor to make sure that everything looks correct. After that, we light and render the animation to add the finishing touches. And then it's ready to use in meetings with patients or other doctors. Creating character animations is similar, but it takes more time since the process is more complex. We are also working with the hospital's virtual reality team, as well as development for mobile devices, such as the Heartpedia app. <laughs> Sometimes the clearest way to explain information to patients and families is with animation, and the Media Lab makes this possible. The success of our animations astounded us. We started to think about what might happen if we took those animations and put them into a virtual world. How about a gaming world? How about a world you can experience with a VR headset on? We started to create gaming that taught our doctors about our hospital and about our procedures and about our children. We built virtual reality hospital, rooms, equipment, and patients. Physicians and clinicians can come into this environment for a few minutes, for an hour. They can do it from home. They can go in by themselves, or they can go in with their team, just like you practice medicine as a team. We even have a little helper bot uh, that can help you through when you get a little bit confused. But the most important thing is you can make mistakes in this environment and learn. No child is ever harmed. We also teach virtual reality communication training. It used to be long ago that we'd push a medical student into a clinic room let them develop their own bedside manner and communications. And sometimes that didn't go so well. <laughs> so we're doing it better now. 
<laughs> we now can practice as much as we want in the virtual reality environment, learning how to communicate clearly, sympathetically, and we do that with avatars. So with the success of these different games, we started to think about our patients. Our patients are kids. They love virtual reality. They love animation, so this should be an easy sell, right? But our team wanted to do more. They were thinking about what could we change in medicine for these kids? How could we change their outcome? I want to introduce you to a patient. Her name's Erin. Erin has a complex neurological disorder that causes chronic pain in her legs, so much so that she's been confined to a wheelchair. She came to Cincinnati Children's for treatment. Quickly, after she arrived, we enrolled her in virtual reality therapy. Within a few days, she was starting to stand up. And within a few weeks, she was walking. And she walked right out of that hospital home. It was an amazing day. <laughs> this led us to some more questions. As you can tell we ask a lot of questions. More complex questions. What about surgery? Could we plan surgery in virtual reality? Makes sense, doesn't it? A surgeon be, should be able to practice your surgery before he or she goes in. My daughter is a musician. She would never step on the stage without looking at her sheet of music and practicing it time and time again until she had it perfect. Shouldn't a surgeon have the same opportunity, especially when a child's life is at stake? There's a very special patient that reminds me of this question and motivates me every day, and I want to tell you a little bit about her. Her name is Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn was born on a cold November day. Teams of medical professionals in her delivery room. And we were astounded when we heard that little cry, finally that little cry. And we gave her to mom and dad for a quick kiss, but then we had to take her away, take her away to open heart surgery. Brooklyn has something called heterotaxy syndrome. Heterotaxy syndrome is when the heart is malpositioned in the body. And those strong pumping chambers that pump blood throughout the body, they're weakened. Brooklyn would do great from this first surgery, but she'd go on to fight a battle, a battle of procedures, tests, surgery in her young childhood. There was also another team that was fighting a battle. It's her surgeon and her cardiologist. Surgeon Dr. Morales and her cardiologist Ryan Moore. They were fighting a battle of decisions, especially coming up to her third surgery. They had a huge decision to make. Either they could go with a traditional repair or they could do something different. The traditional repair would lead her to a course of eventually getting a heart transplant. Although that sounds like a good option, maybe a permanent option, it actually isn't for kids. The best thing is to repair her heart and keep it intact and with her. But Dr. Morales had been thinking of something new, had an idea about a surgery that maybe he could do a little differently than the traditional one. But was it worth it to go into the operating room not knowing? How could he tell these parents that he wasn't quite sure how it was going to turn out, but he was going to do his best? Fortunately, Ryan and David are foundational members of digital experience technology, and for years they had been studying with our developers on how to do virtual surgery, and this was the perfect chance to use it. They brought Brooklyn's images, CAT scans, MRIs, that sort of thing, into virtual reality. They then practiced. They practiced that new surgery over and over and over again, practicing where to put patches, as you see here, and where to put baffles or new tunnels for the blood to go through. 
They practiced until they were 100% confident it would work for Brooklyn. And they didn't stop there. They then brought the surgical team in, went through their plan so that everyone in that operating room knew what was going to happen. Shortly after this, Brooklyn went to surgery for this third repair, and they were successful. She got a wonderful repair, and as you can see, she is a happy, healthy little girl now. I recently got to talk to her mom, and she said the big thing she's worried about now is uh, if she's going to win her soccer game. And she really likes to ride that bike through the park, and is she going to get to do that? But there's no worry about heart transplant. Amazing. So dozens of patients, like Brooklyn, have benefited from virtual reality surgery planning. But we want to do more. This year, we look to expand our virtual reality training to areas like fetal medicine, fetal surgery, neurology, and orthopedics. This video, I didn't quite know I was going to get to use it, we just filmed last week. This is our surgical team in Cincinnati, here in offices, and they are meeting with a surgical team that's in Florida. They're struggling with a congenital heart surgery. We met in that virtual room in a multiplayer game of sorts, and we worked together to solve the mystery of that patient so that they could go forward with a successful surgery. So, as you can see, the future of pedi pediatric medicine is so very bright. Through animations, gaming, and virtual reality, things that I never thought were possible in my early career are now happening. They're possible. The reality of pediatric medicine has changed, and it's revolutionary. Thank you.